let's talk about fonts now fonts let's just bring in h1 so this usually applies to text so paragraph em h1 h2 you know yeah let's bring this um, we would say uh, i am great all right so if we refresh i put i am great <clears throat> now we have i am great there but this is the default font of this particular element or generally so we want to change the font i'm just gonna say h1 then i see i want to change the family font would okay let's start like this a font would ha would be affected by there's the font size the font style the font family the font weight we're going to look at these things one after the other but generally what we want to manipulate here is the look and feel of how the text is on the screen the look and feel of, of how the text is on the screen now we're starting with font family so we say font family the different font families so as you can see there is cursive there's fantasy there's sans serif and there is serif so let's start with serif so if you see serif is kind of like the default series have this you know how will i put it in your we'll call it a jasa but here we'll just say they have these extra things on it you know these squiggly things which is different from if we say sans serif so if we say sans serif you could see that is no longer there so if we move on to cursive, cursive is a kind of imitates how our, our handwriting is like this. Then obviously you could also try system UI. So this is like what is applied on my system. So system UI. Now, um, so that's for font family. You could also, these are the default font families that you could use. And if you don't want to use this default font, for, sorry, this default font families, you could decide to bring the, a font family to be applied to this. But we would talk about that much, much later. So that's for font family. Um, let's talk about font size. So font size, um, depending. Uh, so now the font size for this, I think, is um, I don't know. I don't know what font size that is. But let's just make it smaller. So let's say sixteen pixel. So it looks like a paragraph. So I see that sixteen pixel. So you could make it as big as you want. So that's for font size. Then we have font style. So let's start font style. Font style. And then the font style, you could choose between italic, normal, oblique. So let's just use it because we use it to look a lot. So see that's what it, it italicizes it. And that looks really, really cool. Alright. Then um another one we could look at is font width. Font width determines how thick or how thin this would be. So if you say so generally h1s are bold so as you can see bold bolder lighter normal so h1s are bold but if we want to make it thin we could start with a hundred let's see how that looks like so you can see this is so thin and 
keep stepping it up. So if you say bold, or if you just say bold, and it looks like that. If you say bolder, okay, this can't get bolder. All right. So that's for font weight. So next, let's talk about how we could bring in a external font and apply it to what we are working with. Now, if we want to use like an external um, font that isn't on our system, we could, for example, ones from, let's just use the most popular one, ones from Google Font. This is how we're going to go about it. So first, you want to go to fonts.google.com and then um, let's pick one. Okay, so this honk looks really good. We click on honk. And then, um, okay, I think I've selected this before. So, see, so now selected one and to get embed code. This was a bit different before. And now, all I have to do is copy this. You can see embed code in the head of your HTML. And then I come here and in our head, we paste it. So we paste this in our head. Then all we can do is, like they said, in our font family, we put honk in front. Put a comma. So what this happens is that our browser is going to look for this first. Then if it doesn't find this, it will apply this as the default. So if we go back and refresh, you can see this has been applied. So that's how you can apply a external style to what you're doing. Or an external, I said external style, you could apply an external font to what you're using. So next we're going to talk about styling a list. And I'll meet you on the next one. Now let's look at list styling lists um, so that we could change some default configurations. I'm just going to create a very simple list here. So we just use another list. And then we'll just say, I'm just going to use li, we'll say house, car. If I want to style the list, so just say li, the first thing we want to style is the type. So list style, sorry, type. Now, we the default is usually disk, but then we have all this, so we could try, um, I think it's, it's a default disk or oh, circle, I'm not sure. Let's, let's see what circle looks like. So. If we refresh this, you could see, so let me zoom in. You can see we have um, circles, this is a circle. So if we change this to disk, you see, disk is, a, disk is the default. Then if you change it to square, yeah. So there are quite a number of uh, quite a number of, of style types. However, I would like us to, let's say for example, you don't want this to be the default list type. Your company has given you a different way to style it. You could decide to change it to an image. So in here, I have already imported this really, really small image. I got this um, icon from Favicon icons. So I just downloaded it and reduced the size. So what I can do with it is 
just come here and say list style image and then I would use URL so now I'm just going to pick this one so if I go back as you can see now this is this is it that's taken over but if I don't want any styling whatsoever I could just if I don't want any list style and uh, type if I don't want any type I just go none and uh, it's no longer there so that's the basic or that's the simple way of styling this so you could always check out documentation for much more details for that but this is a simple way of styling this yeah next thing we want to check is we are going to talk about CSS units just for a brief moment before we go into other parts of our CSS for our CSS units, so far we have been we've been seeing things like um, let's say we've been seeing things like pixels. So let's say font size. We say thirty pixels. So you have been seeing things like pixels. Apart from pixels, there are other ways by which we can increase something. Maybe the height, the width, the length, the breadth, whatever. There are different ways units we could use. Pixel obviously is the most popular one. Apart from pixels, we have EM and then we have REM, which means root EM. Then we have percentage. And we have inches, we have centimeters. But most of the time, you're going to find yourself using pixels, percentage, maybe REM and EM but most most of the time it will be pixels and percentages so just bear that in mind when it comes to CSS units another thing I would like you to point out would be colors so for color so far we've been writing the names directly if you don't want to write the names directly if you want to use hex codes you can use hex codes so for example white is um, I think white is FFF so if you use FFF this will become white right so um, I think AE 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 is gray I'm not sure about that okay yeah I'm not sure so that's gray and um, FFF no no zero 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 is black yeah if you don't want to use that, you could also use RGB or RGBA, but let's start with RGB. So if we use RGB 0, 0, 0, that's black, so it doesn't change. But if you use RGBA, A stands for alpha. So the, al the last, um, what would I call this, the last argument or property we're going to put here will determine how the opacity of this color so if you say one it will be black if you say zero it will be completely invisible if you say 0 0.5 then it fades it by 50 percent so as you can see it's faded by 50 percent if you want if you make it one it becomes so so light it's so so light it's there but it's so so light uh, you could also use HSL. Uh, so let's just look at color picker from so you can see. So you could use HSL. Let's do that. This is so just do this. And then. Okay. So if you go back. What that didn't apply. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so you have that for your HSL. So those are ways by which, those are the units we could use when it comes to CSS. Next, we're going to talk about box model. The box model. The box model is 
what we're going to talk about next.